Time for the top three supercars from the Frankfurt Motor Show. Now, you might notice that we normally do a top five, but there were some pretty high profile absentees from this show, including Bugatti, Ferrari, Koenigsegg. So we thought we'd trim it down and keep it to podium positions. And we start with this, really quite special, isn't it? This is called the Lamborghini Sham. I think I had a girl at school I knew called Sham. Anyway, what is it? It's a hybrid supercar, a hypercar even you might say. A Ventador lineage, so it's a big V12 engine, mid-engined, a serious, serious piece of kit. But this car is a hybrid. In fact, it doesn't have lithium-ion batteries like 99% of all the hybrids out there these days. This thing has super capacitors. What are those? Well, they're a lot more power dense than lithium-ion batteries. These ones are placed in the bulkhead between the engine and the rear seats. And the thing about supercapacitors is they can soak up the charge and release the charge at the same rate. So the idea here is you can stomp on the brakes and fully charge your supercapacitors. And then as soon as you get back on the throttle, it releases that energy as a boost up to 80 miles an hour and fills in torque when you're changing gears. It's a single clutch gearbox like the Aventador, so you need that torque fill to smooth out the changes. The hybrid motor, it's about 34 horsepower boost, not that much, it's attached to the gearbox and that accompanies this massive 6.5 litre V12 from the Aventador, but upgraded with titanium inlets. So now it produces about 770 odd horsepower. Add on that 34, you end up with 807 horsepower, give or take. That makes it the most powerful Lamborghini ever. It's also the fastest Lamborghini ever. 0 to 60, 2.8 seconds, top speed, 217 miles an hour. So this car is absolutely not messing around. And then we need to talk about the design, don't we? Because at the front here, you'll notice these lights are taken from the Terzo Millennio. That was the all electric concept the Lamborghini released a couple of years ago. Quite striking. And as we move down the side of the car, They've taken quite a few cues from the Countach. So, from the nose, across the roof, and down to the back. That is called the Gandini line. One continuous swipe of your finger. Easy to draw, if I knew how to hold a pen. And round the back, we get more Countach references. So, the kind of raised rear end, the triple tail lights. That's all Countach, apparently. And down the center, a version of the Periscopio. Periscopio? I'm sure someone will correct me on the internet that I pronounced that wrong, which is basically allows you to see out the back through a very narrow slit from the rear view mirror. It's quite a striking thing, but this is what Lamborghini should be doing, right? Proper bedroom poster stuff. The interior, by the way, it's pretty much a Ventador, mostly a Ventador switch gear, but with a new portrait shaped screen in the middle of the dash, a sign of things that are to come from Lamborghini. And that's the point of this car. It's not just a one-off showcase to get loads of attention at the Frankfurt show. No, the technology is there to prolong the life of their naturally aspirated V12 and V10 engines. This supercapacitor hybrid technology, this is how they're gonna make those incredible sounding V12 and V10s live on for the next generation of the Aventador, the Aventador replacement, and for the Huracan replacement too. So rest assured, Lamborghini aren't about to resort to turbochargers like everyone else, which is good news. Price, yes. Uh, I've just been told they are building these, they're gonna make 63 of them and they're gonna cost two million euros plus local taxes each. That's a bit of a bargain these days, isn't it? Okay, so the BMW Vision M concept and the significance of this car right here is that BMW's M division are going to build a standalone supercar. The BMW i8, of course, was never an M product. And I have to say, we saw pictures of this thing and it was revealed two, three months ago and the reaction in the Top Gear office wasn't fantastic. We didn't really get the clashing colour scheme and the super wedgy shape, but having seen it in the flesh, I've completely changed my mind and I absolutely love it. It just looks different, doesn't it? It looks interesting. Um, there's hints, more than a hint, in fact, of the M1 supercar from the 70s in there. Little bits of i8s maybe in the front end and those flying buttresses. We need to talk about the tech on this car because it's a hybrid, like the i8, but it's done in a very different way. Behind the back seats, you've got a turbocharged 
four cylinder engine that produces about 300 horsepower then you've got an electric motor on each axle so it's proper four wheel drive even when it's in ev mode and bmw says that even with the petrol engine switched off just in ev mode it is faster than the i8 with the engine and the motors working together which is quite significant so in total it's producing about 600 horsepower plug it in at home and it will do 62 miles EV only range so you could realistically use this thing as a commuter car and then come the weekend you cool on the engine and you've got the full 600 horsepower 0 to 60 in three and a half seconds I think it is 186 miles an hour flat out quite senior numbers proper supercar numbers this is called electric orange I believe and I'm actually quite enjoying the way that you got that matte silver the electric orange the carbon fiber down there it hurts the eyeballs a little bit but it works this car weighs about 1700 kilos BMW claim if it had been a pure EV it would have weighed to 2.1 tons that's why they're going with a hybrid that's not why they're not making the leap to full electric okay what else can I tell you a uh, carbon fiber tub gold wing doors a very sparse interior speaking of which I've been given a special nod to be able to sit in this car I haven't done this before so bear with me I'm gonna go bum first and try not to take any of the carbon fiber with me as I get in there we go was that elegant a little bit oh yeah all right so you're sitting super low these seats are integrated into the carbon fiber tub and covered in memory foam they're actually super super comfortable really reclined proper supercar position in front of me I've got this incredible butterfly shaped wheel whether that will make production or not it won't um, I'm not sure and in front of that this curved crystal display which I'm sure in a future dimension will have holograms and all sorts of augmented reality things dancing across it in fact they do say that when you're driving at speed in something called boost plus mode then the entire windscreen becomes an augmented reality screen overlaying graphics and the best racing line and braking points on a racetrack for you um, what else can I show you very sparse no other buttons in here these according to the press release are gyroscopic cup holders so you're never going to spill your latte in the BMW Vision M next you didn't expect BMW to do it like everyone else did you all right right not so much of a supercar as a supercar killer but look it's the new Audi RS6 I've probably been more excited about seeing this than anything else at the show have you ever seen a car that's more up for a fight than this it's a proper proper wide boy this 80 millimeters wider than the standard a6 Avant, 40 millimeters wider than the old rs6 it just looks brutal it just looks proper this thing doesn't it um, what can I tell you about it well 4 litre bi turbo v8 592 horsepower it will do 0 to 62 in 3.6 seconds it'll do 189 miles an hour flat out proper senior supercar numbers those and because the bodywork is so inflated only the roof the tailgate and the front doors are actually lifted from the standard a6 Avant the whole rest of it had to be changed but I don't mind that because if you're going for a top of the range car and don't forget the s6 and the s4 of course have now switched to diesel which is a bit of an odd choice but it did leave that headroom for this to be utterly mental and fortunately Audi has delivered nobody does fast estates quite like Audi do they what have they done to the chassis well we've got self-leveling air suspension there's 48 volt um, anti-roll bars the same that you get in the Lamborghini Urus so it should drive properly we're not you know expecting handling heroics from this thing tail out power slides but that's never what it's been about it's been about four-wheel drive maximum grip super fast eight-speed twin clutch gearbox this car is going to be an absolute beast goes on sale early next year costing from about 90 grand and the big question on everyone's lips is this or an AMG E63S